Gentlemen, and I'm from India, and I've done my PhD on the semiconducting material, basically in the nano size, and basically on the low band gap structure, and about the lead sulfide. It's well known semiconductor, but uh, it's a compound semiconductor. Uh, it's quite old material, but we did some quite good experiments. Now, uh, actually, we are. Uh, mm, mainly interested in the optical properties uh, and the doping too. So we did some the experiment like the photoluminescence and and get some interesting results, doping elements too. Yes, I made uh, some slight change of my topic that's uh, quantum dots for medical application. I made it a biotronical application. It's a uh, quite convenient title for this one. Uh, yeah, th this is the objectives. The semiconducting materials is my past work and now a uh, few topics about the quantum dots and the third is the my recent project about the ferro uh, ferrocent magnetic doublets and the application in positively in the bio applications. This is my the past work about the lead sulfide and his subsequent doping and it's quite diameter it's about 3.5 nanometers and the optical properties like absorptions you have seen that some interesting optical properties is here and the photoluminescence it shows a quite <coughs> quite beautiful photoluminescence and the emission speaks and it's also broad tension speed and uh, due to the you know, size quantization effects you uh, can realize that and some doping it's uh, indicated by arrows and i did some experiments with the wide band gap semiconductor too the zinc sulfide it's quite uh, more uh, simple and the beautiful experiments uh, ever i have did and by the polycarbonate membrane with the different membrane size, like uh, about 50 nanometers, 30 nanometers, and 100 nanometers stores. The, the image of the transmission electron microscope about the 15 nanometer diameters. And uh, this is the XRD patterns. It's quite skewic phases. And the third one is the uh, transmission, uh, transmission spectra of the required samples. Now I am quite interested with the quantum dots. The first question arises is the, what is the quantum dots? The people are interesting uh, with the quantum dots is now so, uh, so much because if quantum dots, uh, I, as I understand that, it's a teeny teeny crystal, uh, quite uh, interesting features like optical properties and the quite uh, wide applications in the medical physics. And as I described, the quantum dots are the nanometer scale, semiconductor crystal, and it's better to say in the length scale to uh, that it has the 100 to 1,000 atoms. The, and the quite interesting feature is that the electron hole pairs are created and confined. So due to the confined nature, so we get uh, some interesting features of this. Uh, when the confined electron hole pairs are excited, then the electron of the beam of light, then we get a narrow emission spectra and it's beautiful symmetric one too. And it's extremely broad spectra, obviously. So the main thing is the synthesis of quantum dots as a, uh, basically we need a very care when we synthesize on the quantum dots, the first of the core synthesis. The important thing is, uh, for the com uh, quantum dots, basically the people are interested with the group two to six or four to six or two to five semiconductors, compound semiconductors. Yeah, it's okay now. It's okay. Mm -hmm. The people most commonly used of the quantum dots is basically cadmium selenide. So the process is the first the uh, you need to. Uh, Organomatic liquids and to the any surfactants, the most commonly used surfactant is the topo or top. 
about requires quite high temperature, about 350 degrees Celsius. But now the people are uh, already made some quantum dots uh, at the lower temperature too, uh, about 140 degrees Celsius to 200 degrees Celsius. The main thing is to uh, the main parameters uh, uh, for the synthesis is the, the to control the precursor solvents and the region concentrations and temperature too. Temperature is the main important uh, parameters for this one and the both process did, you will have to uh, do it uh, care but about quite long time and is the time experiments. Now the, you need to go to the cell boats as to protect the core and with the capping agent I used already the topo or top with the uh, the crude topo coated uh, coats, it's quite interesting for that and organic solvents. And now we have to that, uh, remember that the quantum dot is quite uh, slight toxic and we need to it in the biological application so quantum dot should be in the aqua solubility. So, so to have the utilize in the biological applications, the particles should be soluble in the uh, water soluble and uh, uh, we have to uh, uh, modify the surfaces with the legend with some tiles or tiles group and it's the most um, uh, usually used by the um, by some researchers that uh, with the tile groups the matter ever. Now the main thing is the biomolecular conjunctions. It's a uh, difficult question because I am just expert about the synthesis of quantum dots. I need to discuss with uh, Dr. Professor Kondakovse and Dr. Oligo about this uh, is the main part of our, my current research to conjunction with the, bio, uh, the biomolecules. Uh, this is the one, I, uh, it's a fast quantum dots of the cadmium cyanide and zinc sulfides uh, synthesized by the boundary groups is the first synthesized, they synthesize that quantum dots a strong narrow band gap emission as you see that's about size 1 to 6 nanometers with the narrow emission spe spectra and is strong and is too bright. That's the quantum dots under the UV illuminations. It's a, you can tune or it has the tune, tune color tune properties so you can control the size you will get the certain colors. Uh, I tried uh, to synthesize quantum dots. It's my work that I tried with, uh, without topo because uh, top or topo is commonly material. The people, several people have used the, the top or topo. So I tried with the, some new one and I got these results. Uh, made a lead sulfide core and with the surface modification with another white band gap uh, semiconductor with zinc sulfide with the sodium aerosol sodium, it's called the sodium AOT and the heptan without water. Mm -hmm. And surface is modified by the, again, the aerosol sodium and the heptan is. The stem, stem image is not quite good, but uh, if we control the time durations and temperature uh, and the, a protective environment, then I will get a better quality results. And it's uh, the photoluminescence spectra of uh, the uh, first one, the red one is the, about the lead sulfide and the green one is the, uh, about uh, the lead sulfide and zinc sulfide uh, materials. So it shows a quite better, better uh, photoluminescence spectra um, rather than the coarse materials. Now, it's my patient uh, already made some patient work that's uh, already made some patient draft about the fluorescent magnetic droplets. It's a new theme about this because now the already we have quantum dots, so we may have to be uh, applicable in the biological applications. So what is the fluorescent magnetic droplet? It's basically it's a quantum dot and doped with the fluorescent materials, uh, some kind of mag magnetic nanomaterials. Like it's a quantum dots and if we addition of the fluorescent species is smaller volume, it's less than one, then we'll get the several colors. Then we can tune the colors like green and and the blue, red, and the orange. It depends on the, our the 
or addition of the flows and spaces. How to synthesize this one? This is a very, <coughs> we need a protective atmosphere to the ferrofluid liquids and the quantum dots. We can synthesize at this and we can tune it with the different sizes. Here we present, here I present only the uh, green one. Mm -hmm in the green emissions, and finally we get the green emissions with uh, inserting the ferrofluid materials in the quantum dots. And quite interesting it's. Now the optical microscope image of the required, uh, the ferrofluid material containing the quantum dots is quite um, this and quite well distributions. This is the droplets under the UV radius illuminations. And the main difference between this, this is the magnetic field normal to the optical axis and the magnetic field parallel to the optical axis. A quite larger difference, quite uniform size in the magnetic field of the parallel optical axis. Mm -hmm. Now, if you close look to this, the red one, the lower one, is the quantum dot, uh, we consider the concentration C and uh, we get the slope is 0.153. Next, the green one is the concentration of quantum dots is twice the first one, and we got the slope 0.31. And the third one, we, the concentration of quantum dots is thrice of the first one, and we get the slope is 0.484. So it's quite high. So it's quite interesting results so to insert the uh, magnetic, uh, oxides in the quantum dots and basically so uh, it depends on the intensity depends on the volume of droplet and the quantum dots concentration too. Um, this is the aging effect. After two days the same uh, we did the same experiments and we got the quite uh, lower results of the intensities. The, so we, uh, we have to do the experiments uh, at the um, time of synthesis. So uh, it's the first one is lower than the previous one. Previous one is the point, uh, uh, the last one is the point 484, and here the last one is the point 41. Now, the, this is the um, optical, UV optical absorption spectra, and we use the Beard's law. The red data is, uh, is the um, theoretical data of the my theory, and the uh, mob data is the experimental data. It shows quite a good result for the, we can apply the my theory with this, uh, with this one. And we change slide that the BL number law, it's quite well known for everybody. That's we change make a, and that we insert here the paramagnetic concentration too. And the absorption behavior doublet shows some beautiful features that, that the high concentration of the perfluids and the fluorescence nature of the constitution within the doublets and the last one is the most important that we can use the my theory uh, applied to uh, apply to the absorption phenomenon. Now the main question is that what is the application of this? Uh, I copied this from uh, an article uh, about the um, application of this type of materials. That the first one, the quantum dots level cell of cancer cell, and the, the later one is the uh, quantum dot containing the magnetic oxides uh, containing cell. It's the vivo imaging and it shows quite a better result for the in the medical application too. And the last one, the application I copied from an article. So we need to do some experiments about this and I need to discuss regarding these two. And this is my presentation about this with these short times. Mm. Thank you very much yeah. for interesting presentation because uh, I confirm that uh, this is a, a part of results are absolutely mm -hmm. new. Yeah. No, without the last one. Last one I copied from an article. Of, of uh. course, but I mm. hope that our biological colleague will help us. Mm. 
Yeah, I, I need to talk with the uh, professor. Okay, dear colleague, uh, any questions? biological experiments with uh, your, I know that you or already obtained uh, mm -hmm. quantum dots. Can we... No, it's not a quantum dots. It's basically lower dimension size. Uh, I am interested in uh, the dimension lower than the bore excitation radius. Uh, but it's, uh, I got the um, cadmium sulfide about diameter 8 nanometers. is the lowest diameter. But it's not a quantum dots. Uh, but the I want to, yeah, I just uh, need to uh, the lower dimension. I need some experiments and I need some uh, chemicals too. And need some uh, atmosphere like to synthesis because quantum dots, synthesis of quantum dots is very atmospheric sensitive. Uh, so we need uh, some cares and some uh, chemicals and some instrument too. And we need uh, instantaneous uh, um, absorption spectra and the luminous inspector too.